Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Michael Burhan for RetroIsland.com and I'm here with... My name is Rob Clark, I'm the PR guy at Curve Digital. So tell us a little bit about Curve Digital. So you've got one game that you've got here today, you've got four. So tell us about each individual one. Okay, sure. Um, we'll talk about Stealth Inc first. Uh, Stealth Inc is a uh, puzzle platformer. Um, it's a little bit of Ace Odyssey, a little bit of uh, Super Meat Boy. Uh, and it tries to take Stealth, which is typically you know, stealth games can be really fun, really cool. Um, what the best bit about them is always like hide in just about to throw up behind someone and kill someone or just uh, hiding in the shadows and having everyone else have no idea where you are. And the worst bit about them is when you're found out and you've got to get back to that spot and it can take ages. So the, the basic uh, idea of the stealthing uh, theory is that you take that and you remove that bit where you're having to get back. You, or you get back nearly instantly. So the game takes uh, a bit of a cue from Super Meat Boy in that it's a fairly fast action platformer. There is a bit, a lot more puzzling than Super Meat Boy, but you, when you die, you come straight back. There's no waiting. You're, you're pretty much back where you were within seconds and you can pick up from where you are. And having that sort of mechanic means that we can do lots of clever things by having, um, we basically ask the player to do a lot of trial and error. So you'll walk into an area and you're almost certainly going to die really instantly. There's always clues. But some of them are really obtuse, really tricky to find out. But dying isn't a big deal, so you can get straight back onto it, jump straight back in. And this is the sequel, Stealth Inc. 2, which is actually a, um, a much bigger game. It just came out, actually, on Thursday on Steam and Good Old Games. Uh, or that would be whatever Thursday this is filmed in, I guess. But uh, we can work that out. It came out recently. Um, it came out on Wii U first uh, last year. And it's done really, really well. Um, it's a really, really cool game if you like Ace Odyssey, any sort of big exploration Metroidvania game because it has a big explorable overworld as well. So it has that kind of 2D platformer sort of genre that's kind of lost in today's market. Yeah, I mean there are, I guess people would say there are quite a few puzzle platformers out there, but um, this one is really unique in the way that it, it, it's got puzzles, it's also got a lot of action, it's got a lot of stealth, it's got a lot of different genres that are mixed together and um, hopefully we've done that really well and people will uh, really enjoy it. So what about the next game that you've got on the list here? Uh, Nova is uh, a really hard game to describe. Um, Nova is essentially a puzzle game, uh, but it's also got a lot of roguelike elements. It's got some like um, light RPG elements. Um, and the basic premise of the game is that you are a scientist and you're trying to, um, oh, sorry, you're, you're a ship trying to rescue scientists that have been trapped in this time vortex. And so what you're doing is you're walking around and you're taking a turn at a time. Um, and all the enemies take a turn at a time as well and so the enemies all have different strategies and different moves every enemy has a pattern every enemy has a way of um, being avoided so you can actually get through the whole game without getting hit at all if you're really really good um, so it feels like a fairly standard game it's a turn based puzzle game and then suddenly uh, you have these elements that start getting introduced that don't obey the laws of turn based so they'll start working in real time so what you'll have is, for example, you'll have an enemy that will be taking a turn to shoot you and the bullet will go one turn, one turn, one turn, and it's only going to move when you move, um, because that's when the turn takes place. But you'll also have enemies that can shoot you in real time, whether you're taking a turn or not. And there are bits of the world, like there are static types that fall down very early on, that work in real time as well. So you can't just sit there thinking, okay, I'm going to plan this out for hours. You've got to keep moving, you've got to keep really thinking fast. and. Uh, as the game progresses, there are more and more elements of the game that are real-time and turn-based together that make you like really have to think on your feet. So, tell us a little bit about the, the other one here, the uh, Ultratron. Ultratron uh, is a game developed by a small studio in the West Country called Puppy Games, and they've made uh, a lot of these arcade titles that are very... Uh, they take a classic arcade concept like Space Invaders, uh, and they just make it more modern. They add upgrades, they add... Um, Sort of these sorts of uh, neon, really bright, really confusing graphics that like really give you a, a lot more to look at when you're playing the game. And um, Ultratron is essentially that same sort of style, but with Robotron or Smash TV. Um, so it's a twin stick shooter. You go through different rooms. Uh, you fight bosses. You upgrade your your guys. You can pick up power ups. There's a big uh, store thing still. It's still obviously classic arcade stuff. There's risk reward stuff going on. When you shoot enemies, they drop coins. You need the coins to get better at the game to get further on, but if you are trying to get the coins, you're going to get right up to where the enemies are, so you're trying to get as close as you can without going. It kind of has that fantasy zone shooter-esque 
uh, using coins paid for better weapons and upgrades. That's right, yeah. After every level there's a shop and you have this sort of, every time you're looking, you're sort of saying, should I wait, should I save my money, see what I can get next time. You've also got to, you can purchase extra, essentially extra lives, the shields from the game. But if you purchase too many, then you don't have any upgrades. If you purchase a few, then you're going to die. So it's, it's a constant sort of balance of what you want to do. And it's, uh, it's coming out uh, in May, early May, so in a, not very long, basically. Um, it's coming out on PS4, 3, Vita, Wii U, Xbox One, uh, and it's out on Steam now. Um, and it's going to be coming out as well with Titan Attack, which is Puppy Games' is, uh, other big title, which is the Space Invaders one. And it's coming out as a bundle uh, with that game as well, so that would be like a good value to not pull five of them and you really like that. Physical or digital download? Sorry? Physical or digital download? Uh, it's all digital, yeah. Everything we do is on uh, either PSN, or the Xbox Store, or on Steam. So let's finally talk about our final game here, which is uh, Porch and Pine. Uh, it's Pork Unipine. Oh, Pork Unipine. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. Everyone gets that wrong. Um, it's a, um, basically, an arena, multiplayer, local uh, fighting game. And you play uh, a porcupine with only one quill, hence the pork unipine thing going on there. Um, so um, each player has this guy, he has a quill, and you've got to kill everyone else that's playing. So it's played with two, or two to four people, and you shoot out your quill and it bounces off the wall. The trick here is that once you shoot it, you have to be able to go and pick it up again. So everyone's going to know where you're going to be. So if you miss someone, you don't kill them. What happens is um, you have your, your, you're really exposed. You've got to go back to your, your quill, pick it up. Everyone knows you're going to be there and they can just hit you. So you've got to be really clever about what you've got to do. It's got loads of different modes. It's got like a last man standing mode. It's got an arena mode. It's got single player as well in like a King of the Hill score attack style way. Uh, it's going to have um, all the usual sort of Steam achievements and uh, high scores as well. But it is like a local game. It's a bit like uh, Tower 4 in that sense, in that it's really designed to be played uh, with friends at parties. Um, that's why it's really great with shows like this, to see people enjoying it. So, um, where can we find you? Where, where can we find uh, Chaos Digital? Uh, so, Curve, are, we're, we're based in London, but we publish on everything. So, I mean, we're at, online. The best place to find us and get information about us is our Twitter account, which is at Curve Digital. Uh, and we're at curve-digital.com as well on the website. All of our games are available on uh, the PSN store, on PS3 and PS4. Nearly every single one of our games is a cross-buy game as well, so if you buy it on, on one of those systems, you've got it on all three of the main PlayStation systems, including Vita. Uh, we're also on the eShop, and uh, as I said, we're on the Xbox store as well. Brilliant. So there you go, guys. Uh, now, check these games out when they're available, of course, as well. And we'll see if we can get a copy so we can do a little bit of a gameplay for you guys. For it's an encore. My name is Michael Burhan, of course, saying that we've got gameplay.